Hello everyone, myself Robin. Welcome to Code Beings. And in this video, we will know about some basic terminal commands which you will find useful if you're working on Linux or Mac based operating systems. So let's begin. So I here I have opened a shell or you can say a terminal. So in this, if I want to know in which location I am, we use something like PWD. PWD means present working directory. So one thing to remember here is directory means folder. Okay, so what is the current working folder that I am in in this terminal? If I press the return, I press it and then you have got something like this. Inside the users directory, there is a sparrow directory and there is a desktop. Inside the desktop, I am in this test underscore shell folder. So we can check it also. So uh, in this desktop, if you can see, there is this folder test underscore shell. So let me open it. So here you can see there are three files a.txt, b.txt and c.txt. So from the user interface, I can directly open it. And we will know like uh, first is the data that is present inside a.txt. So how to do that in terminal? That is how to know what are the files present inside a directory. So we can move to folders or jump to folders using the command cd. cd means change directory and the directory in which you want to go. But in our case, because we are already in this directory, so let me go back to the previous directory desktop. And then I will tell you how to come back to test underscore shell. So how to move to a directory which is a parent directory. That is how to go back to desktop. So for that, you need to do something like dot dot. And if I press return and I type pwd, that is the present working directory. So here you can see I am inside the desktop. Okay, so how uh, to now get inside test shell directory? cd and the directory in which you want to go. Test underscore shell. Okay, if I press return, now I am inside this uh, directory test shell. Okay. Once again, uh, suppose you are here, that is you are inside a desktop, you want to go in a directory which is inside desktop, you need to use a keyword cd which stands for change directory and the name of the directory in which you want to go inside. Okay, so how to see the content? It is very simple, just type ls and it will tell you what are the contents. Now suppose, let's say, Uh, there was a folder also create a new folder let's say test folder okay now uh, suppose we want to let's first see how many data or uh, files and folders are present inside test underscore shell again so now if you see this folder is also present here now suppose we want to only print folders or know only the folders which are present inside the current folder that is uh, getting the names of subfolders and we don't want to get the name of these files how to do that so there is a very simple trick here is just type ls space hyphen d and then star and slash now with this you will get only the list of all the subdirectories and these files will not be get printed on the terminal I think that is clear now okay uh, that's a cool trick by the way because sometimes what happen is we just want to know what are the subfolders and inside each of the subfolders we want to perform some operations based on uh, the type of thing we want to program okay now uh, let so how to clear the screen so those who have attended the previous uh, Python programming fundamentals uh, they know it's with the keyword clear now let's know about how to create a folder. So to create a folder, there is a command which is make directory that is mkdir. And then you type the name of the folder by which you want to create it. In this case, let's say it is folder one, we press return and we can check with the ls command that we have folder one inside the test shell. There is one more way to know in which uh, folder we are, which is very abstract is you just look at the word which is just on the left hand side of this symbol in this case it is test shell so we are inside a folder which is test shell okay 
Uh, but if you want to know the absolute, like the exact path, you have to use PWD present working directory. Okay, so let me clear it. Now suppose you want to create an empty file. So you can do it with the keyword touch and let's say we named it test.txt. Now it is created. Okay, now suppose we want to see the content of a file. So there is a command called cat, cat, yes, cat. And then just type the name of the file whose data you want to see and press return and we have the data. Okay, now uh, there is one more thing. Now let's say this time we want to create a file, but this time we want it to have some data. So how can we do it? It's a very simple way, but uh, to understand it, let's first understand our command echo. So echo is a command in which whatever we types, it gets printed back. Suppose we say hello world inside echo, it will return back hello world. Okay, so now we will use this command echo to write content to a file. Suppose we want to write it to a file. So there is one way is you use this arrow and just type the file name test1.txt. So what this command will do is it will write hello world to test1.txt. Okay, but in case you we want to append, okay, we have to use two greater than symbols. Okay, so single symbol of greater than is used for writing and two symbols are used for appending. In case of append, if the file is already not present, it will behave in a similar way of write. But if a file is already there, instead of deleting the whole data, it will start writing from the end of the file. I hope that is clear now. So let's just write it in test one. How to check the content using a cat command. So let's see. So here you can see hello world is there. We can also ch check here. Okay. This test one file is created inside test shell. We open it and the content is hello world. Similarly, if you see folder one is also there, which we created. Test.txt is also there, which we created using the touch command. Okay, so now uh, there are some tricks which we can also use. Suppose we want to create a file with nothing inside it, apart from using a touch command that can also be done using something like this. That is echo nothing and that nothing is getting written inside this test2.txt. Okay, now there is one more trick which is very useful is, let's say we want to read data from two files and write it in a third file. So that can be done using the cat command. Let me show you. So if let's say we have a.txt and the data is first, we have b.txt, the data inside it is second. Now we want to create a file, let's say third.txt, which should contain the data of both of these two files. How to do that? Yes. So we can use this particular syntax that is write the name of the files in the order in which we want to read the data a.txt that is first read all the data from a then read all the data from b then write it to third.txt okay now what have happened is it have written all the data of a.txt and then the data of b.txt inside third.txt we can check it using the command cat. If you see first and second, uh, we can again see it here also. See first and second. Now uh, I think this part is also clear. So uh, let's move to the next concept which is uh, let's say we want to know how many processes are running in this particular uh, operating system there is a command called top top what it will do is it will show you in the order of uh, decreasing usage of cpu that is which you can see here also that is there is something called window server uh, which is using 32.8 or some percentage of cpu okay and lots of processes are running okay so how to get out of it control c okay uh, there is one more command which is i think very useful is tail command okay so what tail command do is it, it reads a file 
from the end sometime what happen is the content of your file is so big that it, it is not feasible to get fit it inside a single terminal and we are just interested in the very recently appended data for that we use the tail command so how does the tail command works is you type tail then hyphen n then you type the number of lines which you want to read from the end of the file let's say it is 5 and we want to read the content of third.txt and as soon as i print, press return it will although it will print the data in the order of like line number let's say fifth last line fourth last line third last line second last line and last line but it will read the last five lines only that is it will only return the last five lines because this file only have two lines so this time it is returning only two let me add more data to it okay so in this case let's say we have something one two three four five and let's remove this six seven eight nine and ten now saved now let's try to rerun this command and here as you can see it is printing 10 9 8 7 and 6 that is last five lines of a file i hope that is clear now there is a very cool command which is very helpful in case of people who keep forgetting commands that is history so as soon as you return history it will just print all the history up to some certain buffer size which you have recently performed so the command previous to history i performed was clear before that it was this before that it was this in in fact it have the index number also like like uh, the 1052nd command in the history was clear and the previous one was this and the previous one was this so yeah it's a cool command to know also uh, there is one more command which is very useful is how to remove a file so let's say you have these folders and files let's say we want to remove third.txt how to do that is you type rm rm stands for remove and then the name of the file and as soon as you press return and check again then this third.txt which was previously present there it's now not here now one thing to remember here is uh, in case you want to remove a folder or a subfolder you cannot directly use rm so if you use let's say rm for this let's say test folder it will say it is a directory so how to do that so uh, to do the deletion of a directory we use rm space hyphen r hyphen r stands for recursive that is delete all the data which is present inside the directory and the directory as well that we can check this with the ls and as you can see the test folder is now not present here now let's say we want to know the file size so that can be done by using a command which is very easy to remember du which stands for disk usage to know the disk usage information of all the files and folders you then have to type star and then yeah in the human readable form obviously then it will tell you the information of file size with respect to the file name or the folder name because folder one contains nothing so it is saying zero bytes similarly this file contain no data this file contain no data this file contain 4 kb similarly these files so uh, let's do a quick recap how to know the disk usage of a particular folder so we use a keyword called du then here we are using hyphen h why are we using hyphen h because we want data in form of kbs mbs gbs or bytes instead of getting information in bits so we can intuitively understand how small or big the data is and why are we using this asterisk or star symbol so we get the files or folder wise disk usage information now let's say we want the overall information of this folder so we can get it using dot so remember one thing a single dot means the current directory and double dot means the parent directory so what we are telling is inside this test shell calculate the disk usage in a human readable form in the current directory or of the current directory so we will get the disk usage of test shell in this case now let's see in this case it is 24 kb 
Now let's understand one more command grep. So basically grep command act as a filter. So to quickly understand it, let's say from a history, we use a pipe that is the output of this history command will act as an input for grep. And we want to know all the commands which had something like du, disk user. As soon as I press return, I came to know the commands which were executed with the information of their indexes from the history with the help of grep command. And with this, our session on Linux commands is now complete. I hope you found the content helpful. Take care. Bye-bye.